Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our webinar. Uh, before beginning, I want to start with an, a land acknowledgement. Uh, the peoples of the Algonquin Anishinaabe Nation have lived in the, on this territory for millennia. The rich culture and presence have nurtured and continue to nurture the, this beautiful land. We would like to honor the land of the Algonquin Anishinaabe Nation. We would also like to honor all First Nations, Inuit and Métis people, their elders, their ancestors, and their valuable past and present contributions to this beautiful land. So before we begin, I'd like to introduce myself to as well. I say Quay, bonjour, uh, hello, my name is Verna McGregor, and speaking of Algonquin people, I am from the Kitagon City Anishinaabe First Nation near Maniwaki, Quebec. And Ottawa Gatineau forms our traditional unceded uh, land. And um, so I'd like to welcome you here to our eighth and final webinar. And for that too, as well, on behalf of the co-sponsors of this event, I would like to thank them, which is the Ottawa Black Mental Health Coalition um, in Wash and Lodge which is where I'm coming to you from. I currently work at Ben Wash and Lodge too as well. The Ottawa Community Partnership for Health Equity, uh, Crime Prevention Ottawa, who are the organizers of this important event, the Social Planning Council of Ottawa. I also, uh, again, welcome you to this. This is the eighth session uh, of the webinar and, and in, in responding to employees. In responding to mental health crisis, learning from models in Ottawa and beyond. So before we begin, I'd like to uh, say a few um, housekeeping items. First of all, for the French translation, to access the French interpretation, uh, please click on the globe uh, icon on your Zoom toolbar at the bottom. And uh, usually it's at the bottom of your window. You'll see uh, the question and answers to as well, we say for the, uh, for the audience participation to ensure that confidential questions can be asked. Uh, we are using the Zoom question and answer function for this event. You will find a question and answer uh, icon again at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Click on the icon to access the question and answer window where you can type in your questions. The question and answer portion will take place during the second part of this uh, presentation. And we will do our best to get through as many questions as possible this hour. And, and again, too, as well, in terms of live transcript, if you'd like to access an auto-generated transcript, please click on the live transcript icon on the bottom of your screen and select Enable Auto Transcription. And if you find it too distracting too as well, you can also turn it off. Um, so um, in this session, we continue our learning journey on the topic of mental health crisis responses. It's important to note that Black and Indigenous people and communities have historically been underserved and, then, and also inappropriately served by mental health services. And working at Bin Wash and Lodge, we see this too as well uh, firsthand. And not having good options for mental health services can be sadly a matter of life and death. It's our hope that by showcasing some of the existing response options both here and abroad, we as a society can continue to learn how we can do better to serve some of our most marginalized family, friends, and neighbors. We must work together to also end racism. Today, we are showcasing two important programs which are designed to address immediate mental health needs without long waiting lists, which is the Walking, Walking Counseling Clinic and the Counseling Connect. So to tell us about their way of responding in a timely manner to mental health needs, I'd like to welcome our speakers. Our first speaker is Michael Gershuni. And Again, I apologize if I uh, mispronounced this. Um, so Michael Gershuni is the Director of Counseling and Mental Health at the Jewish Family Services of Ottawa, 
Michael is an internationally educated social worker who has been working in the mental health and social service field for over 20 years. He is working with the walk-in clinic, walk-in counseling clinic in the past two years. Now we have Natasha McBriarty. She, she um, challenged me to uh, pronounce her name with an Irish accent, so I hope I, I did her justice, Natasha. So Natasha is a registered psychotherapist and health administrator. With over 20 years of experience in community mental health, she has worked with children, youth, and families across a variety of settings. Natasha is the current Associate and Executive Director of Crossroads Children's Mental Health, the Mental Health Center, and Co-Chair Counseling Connect of Counseling Connect. Outside of work, Natasha can be found running on the beautiful Ottawa Canal and running after her three-spirited children and her adorable puppy. So as you know, Natasha's probably really in shape here. So without further ado, I welcome Michael and Natasha. So take it away, Michael and Natasha, and we look forward to your to listening to the services that you provide. Miigwech. Thank you, Miigwech. Uh, thank you everyone for having us today. Uh, I'm just gonna share our presentation quickly here. Um, okay. Uh, so thank you so much for this introduction. Uh, like it was said, my name is Michael. I'm the uh, I'm uh, presenting the Walking Council Clinic here, and Natasha will be presenting the Council Connect because these two programs are uh, linked. We thought it would be better to have the two uh, uh, presentations done together, uh, and that will make a little bit more sense uh, for the audience. We would hope. So a little bit about. Uh, the history and how things started. Um, the idea of the walking counseling clinic began in 2013. Um, the goal was to have quick access to mental health services, uh, to um, remove uh, stressors from ER and primary care around mental health. So people who had simple mental health issues did not uh, block the system. Um, and then to create more connection between uh, community and the different uh, resources available out there. Um, it started as a collaboration between five agencies, uh, family services agency in the Ottawa region, um, and uh, we, all the agencies shared this uh, goal together. Jewish Family Services uh, was uh, and still is the coordinator of the program, but this is something that all the agencies are working in together in operating. Um, the funding comes from uh, the Lynn, um, and we also get a little bit of funding over the years from uh, United Way as well. Um, the model that was the model was not unique to us. We actually borrowed the model from uh, another clinic in southern Ontario, uh, developed by uh, Karen Young, but we've adapted it over the years. Um, by now, at the present, we are still one clinic, but there are twelve sites across the Champlain region, going from uh, uh, Deep River up in the north uh, to Cornwall in the south. Um, and we see between 2,000 to 3,000 clients a year. It really depends on the situation, things uh, shift and change. I've included some ex uh, excerpts from uh, client testimonials here. So here's one of them. This was my first counseling experience of any kind. I found the experience to be excellent and I feel better after today. And this is something that's quite common for uh, walking clients. These are many of the clients have not had experience with um, the mental health system in the past. And uh, this is their first step into this um, into these kind of services. So we really try to be as welcoming as possible, create a positive um, environment as possible to allow people to continue the journey in any way they want if they need to continue and walk in the system. Um, our partner agencies, there are many partner agencies. Uh, right now we have almost 30 agencies that are contributing to the counseling on the different sites. Um, each site, all the sites are using the same model, which we'll talk a little bit about soon, um, but each site operates on different hours uh, and different days and is changing a little bit their, um, their response based on the community that they serve or they focus. So for example, at Center Town uh, Community Health Center, uh, the focus is while well, we see everyone there, the focus is on the LGBTQ plus uh, community. Uh, at uh, NROC, for example, the services are focused for the Arabic speaking and uh, Somali speaking communities. 
and so forth. Each site has a, a slightly different uh, community they may focus on. Um, services are offered obviously in those uh, languages and we really try to offer the services uh, in a model that's uh, from the community and for the community. So people can uh, see themselves in the counselors if they choose to. Uh, our clients can go to any other um, clinic. They don't have to go to the clinic that, that they identify with, but it's available for them. And this is also reflected in the comments uh, from our um, clients, which say, I was happy to see counselors from different backgrounds. So what actually do we offer? We offer a single session model. This is across the board. All the walking sites offer a single session model. We sometimes go into a second and a th even a third on rare cases if we feel that there's actually a clinical need that requires that. This counseling session is uh, 90 minutes long, um, which is quite long. Um, and we work from a model where uh, you go into the, the session and there's you'll be assigned a counselor that best, best fits your needs. There's usually more than one counselor on, uh, on, the, on the clinic, on the site, and there's also a clinical supervisor. So together, there's a little bit of a discussion and they assign the right counselor to your needs. The whole work continues to be in a brain hive kind of or hive mind uh, activity. It's very collective. 90 minutes, there's a break in the middle where the clients gets to reflect a little bit about what's been going on. The counselor goes and checks in with the supervisor. We try to make the most out of this short period of time so the client can get as much as possible. So the counselor will, will consult with the supervisor, with the other clinicians, go back and meet with the client as well at the end. Um, and, uh, and then at the end of the session, as the client uh, leaves, then there's some debrief that happens with the uh, counseling, with the counselor. Uh, it's called a brief narrative therapy framework, and we'll talk a little bit about it uh, later uh, if we have some time. There's obviously no cost to the clients. It's all free, uh, and we operate six days a week. We found out that Mondays is not a really good day for us to operate, uh, but we do offer the services over the weekends and also uh, in the evenings, usually up until uh, 8 uh, p.m. Most clinics begin uh, working around 12, sometimes 11.30. We serve clients from ages six and up, but usually for the younger ages, um, we see few of those clients as most of these clients go to the walk-in clinics for um, uh, the children mental health uh, um, clinics uh, that would be at Crossroads or at YSD. However, we never turn someone away. If they come to us, we will see them, but we can try and connect them to those services as well. We see individuals, couples, and families. Uh, interesting enough, we saw a lot of uh, increase in couples during COVID, as people can imagine, cramped in, in uh, apartments uh, and trying to figure out their relationship uh, in those dire, dire situations. Um, a testimonial, uh, booking an appointment and going through traditional intake can be too overwhelming for someone dealing with anxiety. Being able to walk in and get help is a huge help. And, and this is exactly what it's about. Come in, first come, first serve you'll get the, the service. Very rarely do we have to turn people away. If we find that we are too busy, we can direct people to other sites. There's usually more than one site that's operating uh, on the same day. Um, and so people can get the services that they need on the spot, which also leads to uh, very little um, uh, no-shows or, or, um, or uh, uh, disappointments from clients. So a little bit about what is narrative therapy for those who don't know what it means. It's a very well-researched model. It was um, developed in Australia uh, by Michael White and his colleagues in the 1980s. Uh, it's more of a humanistic approach. Uh, um, it's really about empowering the client. It's a collaborative approach and the collaboration with the client that is goes all through the work. Uh, we try to use the language of the client as much as possible, write the notes together with the client. And when possible, when the client leaves the session, they will get a copy of the note, which is in their own words for their own use. They can do with it um, as they please. Many of them actually uh, keep that. I've heard clients who share that with uh, their loved ones or with a family doctor, and that helps people uh, remember what was in the session. Um, the narrative uh, therapy really tries to separate the person from their problem. So we are talking, we're not talking about someone who is schizophrenic, but someone who is living with schizophrenia. And there's a lot of question about what does the problem bring to your life and how does it make you make it difficult? So this is part of that empowering process. Um, really trying to connect people to their values, to who they are, who they want to be um, um, and what they aspire to, to do. 
and really trying to be as non-judgmental as possible, understanding their life stories and finding other ways to talk about their life stories. There's a lot of research done on using uh, brief narrative therapy within uh, um, uh, walking clinics with uh, that shows that it's quite successful in making um, a difference. We'll show our, our numbers a little bit later uh, in this uh, in these slides. One thing that was really important for us as we established the clinic was to create uh, a confidential and anonymous system. So even though there are um, multiple sites, uh, nothing is um, transferred in between the sites. Each site is completely segregated. Um, and so clients feel that many clients who have hesitance in coming to the system know that whatever they're uh, sharing stays with that specific site that they've seen. They also are not mandated to give us any information that we will verify, like their name or address, whatever they'll give us will be satisfied with. Um, we obviously have some uh, uh, exceptions to the confidentiality uh, when it comes to uh, uh, safe to uh, um, self or others, but um, at, at most parts, we are able to maintain uh, complete confidentiality between sites. Accessibility is something very important for us. Uh, we offer the services in person uh, through phone or video, especially now during COVID. Uh, it's really depending on the client's needs and preferences. Obviously, as I said, there's no cost to the client, so removing this barrier from the, the, for the client. Uh, we do offer the services in multiple languages. Our main languages are English, French, uh, Spanish, Arabic, uh, Mandarin, and Somali. However, counselors offer uh, services in other languages as well. And so if someone comes and has a specific language need, we might be able to direct them to a specific site and make sure that there is a specific counselor there at the time. We try to refrain from using um, translation services as we feel it gets um, a little bit more complicated in a single session. Uh, if there's a translator involved in a, or interpreter involved in a, uh, a counseling session, there's another person and another relationship that needs to be built. It just takes more time. Um, uh, we really try to make an effort to support those with limited uh, technology skills or literacy skills. So if people come to us or call us, we will be very authentic to those needs and try to walk them through that so they'll be able to use the, um, the services uh, to the max. Um, and of course, we always welcome people to visit the site, come immediately to the site and just walk in, depending on the sites that are open. Uh, right now, some sites are still open and some sites are still closed for in-person services because of COVID. Um, we invite people to call us uh, and you can also book a session with Counseling Connect um, as Natasha will explain a little bit later. Some uh, um, stats about what we do or how we evaluate our work. Uh, we try to understand people's uh, severity of the problem that they are facing as well as how does their coping um, uh, skills change over time. Um, and we do it just before the session, just after the session, and then between three to six months after the session. And consistently, we've been getting the, the message that, as you can see in the light blue, the severity of the issue seems to decrease and the uh, uh, coping skills increase um, uh, following the session over time. I was really interested in showing you uh, the resources sought after, after the visit to the walk-in because what we see here is that about 60% of the clients, a little bit less, chose to go and continue with ongoing counseling. Many of the agencies that offer the services offer some ongoing counseling that are able to absorb those clients into their caseload. So there's some uh, back doors that happen. But what's really important is that about 40% of the clients do not need additional uh, support. The single session is enough for them. They just need this touch and go and then continue, continue in their life. They're obviously welcome to come back uh, to the counseling clinic later on, and that happens. We have people that come uh, uh, maybe two or three times a year. Um, we never turn them away, but it's enough for many, many people. So we do the work that we want to do, divert people from uh, waiting in uh, ER rooms because they're having a panic attack, for example. Um, the pandemic uh, introduced a very um, interesting uh, challenge for the walk-in, uh, on all services, the walk-in included, um, and uh, we had to adjust our services. So we did add those virtual services for phone and video, which we didn't have before the pandemic. Um, there were uh, changes across the sites. Different sites were operating in different, different contexts. So if uh, 
pardon me, a site was operating in a hospital, they were not able to open the sites for in person, for example, or uh, they had to uh, focus their work uh, slightly differently. Um, so things kind of differed from that uh, coherent model um, that we had before. Um, when it was possible, we were offering uh, in-person counseling. Uh, we opened a special site uh, during, uh, with, together with Somerset West uh, for in-person counseling during uh, the second wave. Um, interestingly enough, while there was some update on that, most of the clients preferred at that time to uh, be seen uh, virtually. However, there is a change now when we see more and more people coming for in-person. I can tell you that uh, last uh, Sunday uh, on our site, most of the clients were in person. Um, we do try. We did try to increase our collaboration with additional agencies to increase the outreach. So we've tried to uh, uh, expand to rural areas like Renfrew. We've opened uh, our uh, site with the uh, for um, African Caribbean and Black communities um, there as well. Um, did a little bit more work at Fenwick County, uh, really trying to to bring more people into the service, allow them to utilize those services. Um, and then increase our media presence in multiple languages. So uh, we were um, sending uh, or providing um, uh, messages in uh, uh, in Spanish and Arabic and Mandarin to increase our, our presence there to let people know. Um, and then uh, having other agencies join um, us and then for us together join to Council Connect into creating a platform that actually uh, allows many, many other agencies to offer the single sessions. Uh, and Natasha will speak about it soon. To summarize what we have here after several years of the walking counseling clinic, we have the largest walking counseling clinic in Ontario and probably in Canada and probably one of the largest in the world. It's, it's a magnificent program that's been developed over the years uh, and uh, has been proven quite effective. And now it's about taking it to the next stage where it's joining Counseling Connect as a platform. So with that, I will thank you for listening and I will give the stage to uh, Natasha. Thank you so much, Michael. Yeah, so I'll tell you a little bit about Counseling Connect. If it, yes, here we go. Um, so uh, just to recap, um, Counseling Connect is a COVID-born innovation and it was a collaboration or continues to be a collaboration of community-based mental health and addictions organizations. Uh, and what's important is that we've leveraged a digital platform and virtual care to connect children, families, youth, adults, and older adults from Ottawa and the surrounding regions to prevention-oriented mental health and addictions care. Next slide, please. So as, as Michael um, described with how, um, you know, the walk-in cl clinic adapted to the pandemic, uh, that was really the impetus for Counseling Connect. So um, as you know, um, from one day to the next, many of our organizations shifted to virtual care. And we were very concerned as a, a collaboration of service providers that this would mean that clients would have to go and navigate each of our individual sites to find out, you know, which sites were open and what the restrictions were and how they could access care. So we were very motivated to create a, a platform that would uh, make that much simpler for people to access. Uh, and we also anticipated that given the pandemic and, um, you know, the needs that uh, were precipitated by the pandemic, that there would be an increase uh, in demand for mental health and addiction services. Um, so if you could go to the next slide. Um, so the idea was really to pull existing resources for single session mental health and addictions counseling. So uh, there were many organizations, as Michael mentioned, doing great work in, in the walk-in space uh, before the pandemic. And this was really an opportunity for everyone to come together under one umbrella uh, and one web page to house all of the resources and make it simple for uh, users to book. And like I said, we really want to leverage excuse me, leverage the digital platform, which would allow all of these organizations to post their appointments uh, and make them seamlessly available to the public. So um, many of our partners are uh, the same as would be partners on the walk-in clinic. Um, and we oscillate between, um, you know, 20 and more, uh, 
people really have been um, great contributors throughout the pandemic and currently to Counseling Connect. And what it's allowed us to do is to um, maximize what each individual organization could offer. So whereas perhaps uh, Crossroads where I work could offer a day and a half of walk-in services uh, with um, staff who were you know, maybe redeployed or weren't able to offer the same services they did pre-pandemic, they were then offer, able to offer some capacity to Counseling Connect making uh, the whole much larger than all of its parts. So um, Counseling Connect is a real collaboration. Um, we, we started out with, a like as I said, a small group of very motivated service providers wanting to make their services as accessible as possible. Uh, but one thing that really united the group and I think anchors its work to date is um, the voice of clients. And so we have two client partners who are very connected to uh, networks of clients through Psychiatric Survivors Ottawa and through Max uh, Ottawa. And um, bring the perspective of, of uh, clients, and and I would say continue to remind us of um, what's important uh, in this work. And um, you know, one of the things that that always amazes me is how uh, how value driven uh, the group is. So we often ask ourselves, is this really about the client, or is this something that should happen in the bank in the background? Um, but that really, if we're going to facilitate access for clients, really needs to be. Um, as I said, dealt with on that back end. So um, this is a, a picture of the site. So um, if you go to counselingconnect.org, you'll find this landing page right here. Um, and the promise is uh, free same day or next day phone or video counseling. And so what we tried to do with the site is keep it very, very simple. Um, you'll see that if someone is in crisis, there is the possibility in that top right hand corner to access the crisis lines. Uh, we also have accessibility features, um, but the idea was really to gather as little, I mean, enough information to provide a good service, but not to create any barriers. Uh, um, in terms of a, a full uh, screening or referral tool. Um, so a little bit like Michael was talking about, how do you get that help without, you know, so much process getting in the way? So if you go to the next slide. So once you come into Counseling Connect, you'll find these um, service options. And so really services are across the lifespan, uh, ranging from adult and older adult mental health, um, substance abuse, gambling, and gaming. We have youth services, child and family services, uh, indigenous, indigenous counseling, uh, LGBTQ S plus counseling, and African Caribbean and black counseling as well. And um, the um, equity uh, groups that you see, indigenous, LGBTQ, and and ACB communities are services that were developed by and for the community. And I'll speak to that a little bit more. So essentially what the client experiences when they come into Counseling Connect is a very quick booking experience. So they land on the site, as you saw, they choose the service of their choice and it's filtered by region. And so they would enter in uh, an address in Ottawa or the surrounding region, the best way, uh, the, the way that they would like to access services. So by phone or video uh, and choose essentially book right into the time that's convenient for them with a counselor of their choice. So it's about three minutes um, to complete the entire booking process. So the model of care um, is similar to uh, what was described by Michael. Um, there's quick access to uh, a single session that usually lasts between 45 minutes and 90 minutes. Um, I would say that most uh, providers, uh, though not all, are trained in single session narrative therapy or single session solution focused therapy. Uh, I should specify they're all trained, but you know, differences in modality according to organization. Um, and so once the counselor has had the session, there's usually uh, one of three outcomes. So either uh, the um, presenting or immediate concern has been addressed and the client is able to you know, move on with their existing uh, resources, um, or they might be offered some uh, referrals to outside organizations or uh, in some organizations case such as ours because we work with children and happen to have um, 
you know, those more intensive services, they might be referred internally to um, a child service um, following the session. So in terms of, oh, sorry, if you could just go back. So in terms of, of the, um, the next step, um, it, there is uh, that offer of the second session and up to three sessions, depending on who's providing the service. Um, but in some cases, that's uh, a really useful model to um, further address the presenting concern. Um, we would also provide some online resources and recommendations. And on the back end of Counseling Connect, what um, is available to the counselors is a direct access point to uh, violence against women specific counseling, service access recovery, CMHA concurrent disorder support system navigation, and children titled, uh, children titled services. So by that, what I mean, and this is where it's been very helpful for us is often when we're talking about children's mental health or youth mental health, we really can't separate that from parents' mental health. And so being able to make those very seamless referrals into counseling for parents or vice versa has been very helpful. So uh, just to go back to equitable access, so again, you know, the lifespan approach, um, we are offering services in both official languages, uh, and we've recently added Arabic, um, which has been a, a, a really great offering and, and has gotten a lot of uptake on the site. Um, we do work within a mental health and addictions lens, so really, you know, not looking at that dichotomy, but how those things um, work together. Um, the Indigenous specific services, so we've partnered with Wabano and um, the approach again has been to really make sure that uh, the communities, that the ser services are built by the community and for the community. And so uh, we've worked with the Black Coalition of Ottawa um, and with uh, the LGBTQS plus community through Centre Towns um, team. So um, this summer we hit our 10,000 session mark, uh, which was, um, you know, quite quite something uh, given that we started just a few months, um, or sorry, a few weeks after the first lockdown in 2019. Um, we average about 800, between 800 and 900 sessions per month. Um, and in terms of the age range, we're serving clients from two years old to 95 years old. Um, we have uh, about 100 counselors from the 20 organizations that are delivering services on Counselors and Connect. So um, we've been involved in a process evaluation uh, since the beginning of Counseling Connect. And uh, while we've gathered much more uh, data since this initial snapshot survey, um, this was the original pilot survey that uh, provided some feedback. Um, so our focus in terms of the evaluation is really around the experience of using the platform and the support received from Counseling Connect. And we also want to get a sense of the demographic and, and you know, in sociodemographic information of those using the platform. So as you um, might imagine, um, the concerns during the pandemic largely revolved around anxiety parenting issues with kids being out of school is quite a trying time, <clears throat> excuse me, um, depression, COVID related concerns, isolation and loneliness and work stress. So at the time of the snapshot assessment, 97.5 thought it was easy to book an appointment and actually much more data has come in and it's still around the 97% mark. So I think ease of use is quite high. Um, same with the wait time for service. So people are able to book appointments uh, very quickly. Um, I know that last time I did a talk, I went right into the site and there were appointments available that day. And that is uh, usually uh, the way it is for um, both children and adult buckets. 100% um, felt that their personal information was safe and secure. So we've been very mindful of confidentiality. And I would echo everything Michael said about the walk-in clinic. Uh, it was really important for us that people felt that their information was safe um, and that the platform that we were using in terms of you know, managing referrals coming into our platform into the agency was safe and secure. So lots of emphasis there. And similar, uh, again, to the walk-in, 47% of folks who access Counseling Connect had never met with a counselor in the past. So this was a service, um, sort of, you know, trying counseling for the first time. 
So in terms of session outcomes, so 80% reported the severity of their concern improved immediately following the session. 82% re reported that they were coping better and 97% reported that the session met their needs at the time. So I won't read all of these, but these are some of the um, qualitative feedback that we've gotten from Counseling Connect. Um, and I think, you know, some of these really speak to the usefulness of Counseling Connect. So uh, I have a disability and the fact that I could book this appointment online and attend the session over the phone made it possible for me to access the help I needed. So again, really speaking to some of the barriers that are removed with this, with this um, uh, way of accessing services. Um, and same for uh, the one above, I'm a nurse and having a resource to refer people that covers both mental health and addictions as well and at all ages is brilliant. Thank you for this service. So, um, you know, I think as service providers, um, being able to book directly into each other's services to match people with that appropriate service, but also in a way that's very timely uh, when they need it is so important. So in terms of um, the future, I'll leave this one to Michael. Thanks, Natasha. Uh, so when we talk about the future, we're talking about collaboration with additional partners. Uh, Council Connected allowed many organizations that were able to use the, the or offer those resources to um, throw them into the pot and, and offer them to the public, while at the walk-in we were a little bit more uh, limited. Um, so it's about bringing additional partners who want to maybe be part of this, offer their unique uh, um, skill sets into this uh, service, but at the same time creating a more cohesive model across the board. So when the client comes in, they know exactly what they're going to receive. Um, it's not a hit or miss. Um, there's also the continuous development of an accessible database uh, for the counselors, for the clients, uh, for everyone involved in the, in the process. And then obviously the increased collaboration between the different partners. So we are able to um, understand uh, clearly um, what are the gaps in the system? What should we uh, feel? Uh, what, what gaps can we fill right now? What needs to be done later? So it's not uncommon for us to sometimes get an email that says, hey, we're missing uh, use uh, um, uh, appointments uh, for this week. Uh, can you please uh, put some up if you can? And then people jump in and, and uh, do that. Sure, and for the um, future of Counseling Connect, so, you know, unfortunately, we're still in the midst of the pandemic, and we know there's going to be ongoing service demand. We've, we've certainly seen uh, the need and, and continue to respond to that need, so making sure we have the resources to meet that demand is going to be a first and foremost priority. Um, the second is many of you may have heard of um, the mental health mechanisms that are, uh, you know, up and running in Ottawa, including uh, One Call, One Click and um, Access MHA. And so making sure that there's interconnectivity between those access points and Counseling Connect is so important because we know that for some Counseling Connect will be uh, enough, but for others, we want to make sure that there's a seamless uh, transfer to those services so that we can get additional services and more specialized services where those are needed. We're also really uh, wanting to expand the language and service offerings to equity seeking groups. And so, as I mentioned, we started with Arabic, but we know that there's a need for many more languages. And so we're really looking at building that out over the next little while. Um, and then just leveraging the digital platform. It's a really new way of working and it opens up so many possibilities in terms of, um, you know, connecting us in ways that um, haven't been possible before. And the more that we can, you know, build on what we've learned through the pandemic and use uh, what these uh, platforms uh, are able to deliver, I think the more coordinated our services can be. And, and that's a great thing for clients. Um, and then finally, tapping into replicability and scalability. So we know that Counseling Connect right now is focused on Ottawa and the surrounding regions. Um, but, you know, this is a, a technology or a way of working together that could be replicated and scaled up uh, either geographically or into other um, uh services that, that focus on other social determinants of health. So lots of interesting um, innovations are possible based on what we've learned and, and we're really excited to sort of keep that moving to 
center the client uh, and, and make uh, service access as easy as possible. So thank you so much for having us. We've just included our contacts here so that you can uh, get in touch with us if you have any additional questions. So uh, we will be answering some questions now. Um, there's also a link to our website here if you'd like to um, connect with us as well as uh, a link to our media kit because we know that um, you know getting the word out about this service is so important so that people know how and where to access help. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Natasha and Michael. I, that's, I think, a wonderful service. Um, for the people online, uh, you will find the question and answer, and I see questions coming in already uh, at the bottom of your Zoom screen. So you click on the icon and access the question and answer window where you can type in your questions. Um, we have a large audience today. We have over a hundred people online. So uh, we also respect your willingness to participate and we're glad that you're here uh, and to engage in this conversation. Uh, but we have to apologize in advance to as well for not being able to uh, respond to each specific question because sometimes in our last events we had over like 30 to 40 questions. So uh, we can't get them all, so we apologize in, it in advance. And maybe to as well, if you have the need to, we have the, um, our presenters emails at the end. Um, also to as well, I'll be combining questions if you have a similar theme. Unfortunately, I won't be able to ask each question verbatim. Uh, to lead off the question and answers, I think you've already answered a lot of this though too as well, is um, how has your model been uh, culturally adapted, and I've seen that on the screen too as well, but is there, is there anything else you can add that's interesting in terms of um, uh, addressing the cultural diversity? Um, and have you sought to incorporate cultural informed responses to better serve the Black and Indigenous people? And again, I've seen that also on your screens here too as well, but if you wanted to add anything extra that, that would um, enhance your all, what you've already presented. Um, I can speak a little bit to that uh, with Counseling Connect. We we have, as I said, a sort of collaborative governance. It's it's quite informal, but we're a group of uh, service providers who meet every two weeks and and come to decisions by consensus. Essentially, um, we've had to move very quickly. Um, you know, given that we're trying to respond to, to you know, what's been happening with the pandemic. But um, one thing I will say is that we, we really um, do uh, take the time to have tough conversations and to uh, look at where we're doing well and where we need to continue to improve. And, you know, we, I think everyone is able to um, uh, uh, bring to the table um, their area of expertise. And so uh, for, you know, the Indigenous services, for example, we've really just looked to uh, our Indigenous partners to lead the way and, you know, provided the platform, but how that comes together and the way um, uh, services happens is really uh, led by the community. Uh, same as the Ottawa Black Coalition, uh, they uh, came together and decided how uh, it made sense to um, organize services uh, via the Counseling Connect platform. Um, and so that's what we would be looking to do moving forward is just making sure that, you know, the openness is there for counselors to, or sorry, for organizations to participate and collaborate uh, and to take leadership so that the services really reflect the communities that we're trying to reach. I would add to that if I may. Um, on the walking side, uh, our structure is a little bit different than uh, the platform that Counseling Connect offers. Um, and each site is, or each agency that partners is responsible of, on hiring their own staff, but there is a lot of emphasis on hiring the correct staff to the sites. Um, so really trying to represent the communities that are being served. So for example, at Southeast Ottawa, where we serve Arabic and Spanish speaking populations, there is an emphasis on counselors that are coming from those uh, uh, communities. All the forms are offered in multiple languages. So uh, whether you uh, 
have uh, if you have no command at all in English, you'll still be able to uh, participate and utilize the service. Um, and then there's ongoing training that happens with all the counselors. Uh, there's a, a monthly meeting with psychiatrists as well as yearly trainings, which also uh, include the um, um, reference and, and learnings around uh, cultural humility and appropriateness. Um, and it's something that's ongoing is ongoingly being discussed every week because there's a supervisor on site every week to meet with the, the counselors. Wonderful. I think uh, this session is so important too as well. Uh, for me, also being an Indigenous person and seeing like the, the Jewish family services, I would never have thought that it would be open to everybody. And I think that's why these sessions are so important and you learn everything every day. Uh, there's questions coming in and about also participation. Uh, one question here is an example, which is similar to another question is, what is the agency expectations if one would choose to collaborate with, uh, with your organization? Apart from what you have already mentioned, uh, is there an example of the commitment of a specific day of interventions? Um, they want to know, they want you to elaborate on your criteria if, if an agency was to collaborate with you. Um, so for Counseling Connect, it's really been, um, I think the expression is the coalition of the willing. We uh, are just a group of service providers who is offering services to the community uh, and, you know, whoever was able to contribute to that greater pool uh, was invited to, um, to participate. Uh, and from there, we really want to make sure, of course, that all of our service providers are trained. Uh, many of our organizations are uh, accredited. Um, and so uh, everything that happens in Counseling Connect um, from the access point to the session happens within the Counseling Connect platform. But what happens from the time that a client um, becomes connected with a counselor uh, becomes within the purview of the organization uh, from whom they're accessing service. So uh, we've just tried to uh, uh, stay within those parameters in terms of um, having a group of, of trained uh, mental health professionals who come from uh, the recognized community providers that we currently all work with. Um, and so if, if an organization was interested, uh, they could certainly reach out to our team and we would uh, be more than willing to, to, to have a conversation about how we can um, work together. From the walk-in side, uh, our sites operate, again, they're, they're different. Each site operates in a different model. So we have sites that are operating operated by only one agency. Uh, JFS is an example for that, or FSO. And we have sites that are a collaboration of different agencies. So our site in Renfrew County is a collaboration of 12 agencies, or in Cornwall, where it's a collaboration of about three or four agencies. Um, so agencies that are interested are, are able to connect with JFS and we can be able to try and match them with the different sites and, and see what, uh, what work can be done. Uh, we're always interested in opening new sites, um, but it also depends on funding that's available for us. So it's, it's a tricky situation uh, around that. Um, but I think that this is something wonderful that Council Connect is able to give us uh, as a platform. Uh, uh, the walking tries to support and offer uh, services through Council Connect. We don't offer everything through Council Connect because we do feel that some people need that straight walking and not using a phone or a, or a, or a, an internet a website to log in. But we really try to support um, Council Connect, and I think that if uh, a collaboration directly with the walking is impossible. At this time, Council Connect is a great way to be able to um, give some of those uh, resources to the community. I would also want to just divert quickly and Verna and make a comment regarding what you had said about Jewish Family Services. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually a really big uh, mis misconception that uh, Jewish Family Services only works with the Jewish population. Jewish Family Services works actually mostly with the general public. We do have a few services specifically for the Jewish population, but most of it is with the general public. Uh, and we are we do a lot of work with um, diverse seniors, with uh, mental health, uh, with settlement uh, of newcomers, uh, um, uh, and so forth. I really invite people to come and look at the website. There's great services that uh, people can use uh, and, um, and uh, be part of. 
Mm, I know, because there'd be a lot of uh, similarities too as well. Like for us, we deal with a lot of intergenerational trauma and that understanding. So I think that's, that's so important. I have uh, another uh, anonymous uh, question. They said, this model works well for people who need a timely response to the mental health concerns needs on a very short-term basis. What I hear from residents I work with is that there's a lack of free longer-term counseling without long waiting times. Any thoughts on where to recommend these res residents to access services who need longer-term care? Do you want to go first, Natasha? Okay. <laughs> this is always a challenge. It's uh, something that comes up all the time in our conversations. Uh, the thing is that we're trying to balance, and I, I'll speak in the name of everyone, every agency out there that provides mental health services, we're trying to balance between um, offering in-depth services and offering services to the white community. There is, we are underfunded as a sector uh, and uh, we are trying to do the best that we can. If we offer people longer sessions, then it means that fewer people can get the service, sorry, longer services, fewer people can get the service. And this is why many times clients, when they do get an ongoing service, they will find that there's a wall that uh, limits the number of sessions to six, eight, 12. So it allows more people to come. Each agency that's part of the walk-in as well as Counseling Connect, for some of those, I can't speak to all of those, does have ongoing counseling services uh, offered, which is usually on a sliding scale or even completely subsidized. And then people can be diverted in those programs if there's a need. We're also usually aware where there's right now a shorter wait list and we can, we can uh, send people to those uh, uh, programs. So the Three biggest programs are uh, with Jewish Family Services. We have what's called the Counseling Group, but I have to admit it's quite a long wait list for someone who needs a fully subsidized service. Uh, also at FSO, Family Services Ottawa, as well as Counseling Family Services, uh, what used to be uh, Catholic Family Services. There are obviously other uh, organizations that offer those services like uh, Crossroads or uh, YSB, um, uh, but I'm not fully aware about the state of their uh, the wait list at this time. Yeah, so I think, again, <laughs> to your point, Michael, it's a super valid question. Um, that's definitely something that keeps me up at night. Um, what uh, has moved forward in our community uh, just recently is Access MHA, which is the access point for uh, adults 21 and up, and then One Call, One Click, which is the access point for uh, you know infant children and uh, youth. Um, and really what those are, are uh, a single access point to a variety of mental health services for those dealing with uh, those more complex uh, needs that would require longer term care. Um, but where I think we really need to build these systems out simultaneously is that, um, you know, without walk-in services, uh, some of the folks who could have their immediate need resolved very quickly with one session will end up on those longer term wait lists and, you know, inevitably clog up those lists um, because what we're really trying to do is offer that, you know, step one, step two preventative care. And so I think it's so important to uh, focus on both the long term and, and the short term um, counseling needs of the community. Uh, and I would also say that for those who are waiting for those services, unfortunately, that uh, Counseling Connect can be and, and the walk in clinic can be resources uh, where they can, you know, um, get support on a day to day, you know, with with their presenting issue while they wait for those more extensive services to kick in um, down the road. Mm, wonderful. If, if uh, I may add one more thing, there's yeah. also a program called uh, Ontario Structured Psychotherapy Program, which is funded by the government that offers uh, eight sessions CBT. Uh, there's usually not such a big wait list to get into the services. It's free. And if you have clients that are interested, uh, you can try and, and uh, um, apply there. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, we're running out of time, so I have two questions, and so we'll, we'll maybe go really quickly. Uh, one of them was, how are you funded? And another important question is, uh, can refugee claimants access the counseling, counseling services? I spoke a little bit about our funding. So our funding is mostly from the LIN uh, or Ontario Health right now. Uh, and a little bit of support from um, uh, 
United Way, as well as a little bit actually from uh, Bell at Stock, but very minimal there, but we're really thankful for that. Um, as for uh, um, services for newcomers, uh, refugees, obviously they can, they're more than welcome to use the services. I would also say there are two organizations, more than two uh, organizations uh, around the city that would receive uh, services for ongoing counseling for free with very short wait lists for newcomers, refugees, wonderful newcomers. JFS is one of them. Uh, so people who uh, need that are welcome to contact the CISO or welcome to contact uh, JFS or a Catholic uh, Center for Immigrants, you'll get uh, really great services in these locations. And again, it's the, the wait list there are, are usually lower, shorter. Wonderful. So for Council and Connect, um, the funding is um, in large part with pooled resources. So about 50% of uh, the resources are pulled from the various participating organizations. Uh, but in terms of getting the plot and the website um, up and running. We did get some support from United Way, Ottawa Community Foundation, uh, the Lynn and the City of Ottawa. And we supplemented the staffing to meet the demand uh, that we're seeing now through COVID. Um, but sustainability and funding are definitely uh, at, at, on, our, on our immediate radar. Okay, I just got a, a request. Can you please put the info about the seat? The free CBT training here. Thanks. Uh, someone is looking for the free information on the free CBT training. So we'll we'll try to look um, answer that as well. Um, now I think we've basically come to the end of recession, but there was one really quick. If we could answer it really quickly in thirty seconds, is uh, another question is uh, what is your opinion of peer counseling? I don't know if you could answer that in 20 seconds, so. <laughs> I missed the question or opinion of what? What is your opinion of peer counseling? My personal opinion, and I think research would back this up, is that it, it can be very, very helpful. Uh, we're very uh, well connected with Psychiatric Survivors Ottawa, which is a peer-based organization. Um, we work with their client partners uh, to inform the development of our site and make sure that it's uh, in line with you know, clients' needs. Um, uh, and so, you know, and we work with Parents Lifeline for Eastern Ontario, which is a parent peer support organization, uh, and actually share a position with them, um, delivering mental health uh, groups at Crossroads. So I, I think it's an excellent intervention. I think we have some really solid organizations in Ottawa. Um, yeah, and lots of good research on that. Wonderful. I would echo that. I would just need to add that there's, uh, we just need to recognize that there's sometimes a limit on what a peer can offer as opposed to a trained uh, professional and peers are trained as well, but it's important that we are um, making sure that things are not crossing any boundaries. Thank you. So that brings an end to our question. So uh, thank you, uh, the tag team, Michael and Natasha. I think you do a wonderful job. Uh, so, for everybody else out there, I'd like to say miigwech, thank you, merci, and thank you for all your participation today and through the entire eight webinars on the journey of uh, through addressing mental health. Uh, we hope that uh, you've learned a lot in these mm -hmm. sessions too, as we have as well. Um, our last homework for our participants is that we ask that you could, if you could complete the electronic survey that, that will appear on your web browser when this webinar ends, when we log off, um, because uh, feedback is also very important. Uh, so I want to thank you, everybody, for joining us today, and I wish you a, a wonderful day. And again, miigwech. And in Algonquin, we'd say, a young woman which means don't forget to look after yourself. And obviously you are by joining us today. So I wish you well. Thank you.